Hey, good morning, everyone. Glad that you could join us. We are going to be talking about how to use the CRM in your IQ office this morning. And I just want to take a quick minute and introduce myself. My name is Kelsey. I will be taking you through how that CRM side of IQ office works today. And to make sure that y'all can hear me, if you can go ahead and type in that chat box on the left hand side of your screen that you can hear me. That lets me know a couple of things. One, my sound and volume is working. And two, that you know where the chat box is so that you can ask questions and really make the most out of this webinar. Uh, before we begin, I do just want to ask a couple quick questions. How long have you been in the business? So how long have you been working in the real estate business? And then how long have you been using IQ Office? So how long have you been in the business and how long have you been using IQ office? If you can drop that in that chat box as well, that helps me know really uh, what information needs to be covered during this and kind of what the, the span of usage is. Awesome. So it looks like we've got people from uh, just, beginning to use the software to really they're in it every day and they're they're getting back in judith welcome back to the business we're glad that you're here and really the goal of today is to go through this customer relations tab show you what tools are available to you and really the basic overview of what that is you will get a copy of this recording um, it will be emailed to you as soon as it is ready and um, it also will be posted on our YouTube channel and our Facebook channel afterwards. So you can definitely catch up with us there. I'll share those links with you at the end. So underneath this customer relations tab, there are several things you can do. Um, you can go to your contacts and leads dashboard, but then underneath your administration um, header, you have a few things you can do here. You can create custom fields. You can import your contacts you can export your contacts, you can purge your contacts, and you can also manage your contact types. So we're going to start with importing contacts. So if you've not imported your contacts, you can do that by clicking import contacts. That starts by opening up a wizard. You will walk through the wizard, you'll click next, you'll choose that file. I'm gonna find a file here to upload. And then you're gonna say, hey, does that first row contain field names? And what that means is, are there headers on your columns? So one header says name, last name, address, yes or no. And you're gonna say that it's a comma separated value. And then you're gonna go ahead and click next. Um, here is where you're going to play the matching game. So you're going to go all the way across the top of the screen, matching each individual column and what's underneath it. You do need to match those columns. So if this column says name, you would go ahead and you would put first name. And then the next column, there would be another one of these boxes and so on and so forth. You play the matching game all the way across and click next. You'll get a summary import review and click next, it will automatically load all those contacts into the file and you'll click finish and those contacts will be added to your main contacts and leads dashboard. Once they're added, you can open your contacts and leads dashboard and it will look something like this. Let me refresh my screen here. And I'm zoomed way in, so let me zoom out. So you'll see your contacts on this screen. Um, you can individually add contacts if you would like by clicking the plus new button in the upper right hand corner that will slide out uh, an addition. Um, you also can edit your contacts. So a couple things I wanna just quickly touch on before we go into what you can add to an individual contact. 
on your main dashboard, if you need to add multiple people to a contact type, you can do that by checking the boxes next to their name and then adding them to a contact type, a campaign, or you can email them. Um, easily done. So I can say, hey, we're gonna add these people to the contact type favorite, save. And then the other things that you can do, you can do underneath the quick actions. So I also can individually go ahead, I can add someone to a campaign underneath the actions, I can add a note, I can add a follow-up action, or I can change the status right here from that quick actions box. The goal of having your contacts within the system is you're going to be able to add follow-up items or follow-up action item plans, and then that is going to build to your main dashboard for your daily to-do list. So we're just gonna open up uh, Debbie here and I can see all of her information. So I can see um, her name, her email. I can see all of her notes on the right-hand side. Below the notes section is a, a place for campaigns. So I can see if that she's on any email campaigns. I also can set up a portal. And what a portal does is it gives a user the ability to log in to your website. And they can go log into your website and search for properties. So you would set that up here underneath my portal. So we'll call this Debbie and we'll give her a password. And what I just want to quick mention is when you're setting up someone's user ID and password, the hardest thing for all of us to remember are what our usernames and passwords are. So be sure that you come up with a system for this. Your, your user ID is your first name, last name. Your password is the last seven digits of your phone number and your last name or something like that. That way, when your clients call you and they don't remember their username and password, you have some kind of a system to tell them what their password is without having to look it up. Does that make sense to everybody? Awesome. Uh, so once you do that, we're gonna say, hey, is this active or inactive? Do I wanna be copied on this, yes or no? Do we wanna send those watches daily? Um, and then there's a section that says transaction dates. You may be looking at yours and you may not see this social links part. I actually added those as custom fields. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. Just know that if you make any changes on this page, you need to make sure you click this save button before you go to the next tab. So I've gone ahead and I've clicked save. That saved her portal. Um, I can then go and I can look at attachments. So if I have any attachments um, for her, that are, you know, maybe of a buyer's representation or an agency disclosure or something like that that you want to attach to a client, you can do that here, a listing agreement. You can use this as your file storage. The next tab over is your action plan. So I can see here that there are one, two, three, four action plans assigned to Debbie. If you want to delete an action plan, you just click on the delete next to that action plan. And you can easily go in and add an additional action plan. So I can say, hey, I want to add my first time home buyer action plan. And I can see everything that's happening. Or I can add individual actions. So I can go in and I can say, hey, plus new. I need to call Debbie. Uh, Debbie, uh, call. And the description is, um, call Debbie to see how her dog is after surgery. I can say, okay, I would like that to be due tomorrow at 11 a.m. And I can click save. Now that action is going to show up underneath my no plan individually added actions. Anything underneath action plans will uh, fall underneath that individual action plan header. So they're all separated out for you so that you can see what they are. 
the nice thing about those action plans and what they're really meant to do is to go in and start populating what your to-do list looks like. So if I say, okay, here's the Debbie call, I need to check on this, it's gonna show me right here, action description, call Debbie to see how her dog is after surgery, perfect. I type in my notes about follow-up, I easily go in and click save once I've completed that action. The goal is that you add your contacts and leads into the system and then you add the follow-up actions or plans and you're able to easily go in and start working your plan. So we're going to go back into Debbie here. Uh, there's also a communications tab. So that communications tab is tracking all of your emails out of the system to Debbie. So if you're sending her an IQ message and you want to see all of the campaigns or all of the emails that you've sent her, you can easily go in and you can see those underneath this tab. Where I do want to spend a little bit of time today is underneath this property watch tab. So on the details page, we created a portal so that Debbie could log into your website and search for properties and save them. The other thing that you can then do is to create a property watch for your client. So that we are pulling from MLS every five minutes. And our goal with pulling from MLS every five minutes is that your CRM is up to date. So we're fully integrated with your MLS. If you're a member of more than one MLS, we are pulling from all the MLSs that your company is a part of. And you can go in here and create a watch for your client so that they can log into their portal on your website and see all of the properties that you've saved, properties that they've saved, and you can track their behavior. So instead of having to go to your MLS to see if they opened your email and then go to your or your MLS to see if they viewed your property, then go to your email to see if they've opened your email, and then go to your CRM to enter in the notes, you can do it all in one place. And when I say that we're tracking their behavior, you can see next to this contact, there's a red gauge that shows all of the activities. When I open up that contact on the main details page, there's an activity score, and it tells you everything they did. So this Kelsey went to the website and the last time that she did that was six minutes ago. She looked at properties six days ago. She saved properties 19 days ago and she's logged into her portal twice. So you can really start to compile information about your clients. I'm going to go back to Debbie and we're going to go ahead. We're going to set up a property watch so I can go ahead. I'm going to click create a watch. And the first thing that I'm gonna to need to do is name that watch. So you might name this uh, winter 2019. And do you wanna send email updates, yes or no? And do you wanna send them on status changes, reduced prices, open houses? If you don't, if you only want them to get new listings, you would uncheck all three of those boxes. Then you'd go ahead, you'd choose the property type. You'd put in your price parameters. So let's say three seven. the 90s limit it does she want a house a townhouse a condo you choose that property style and you continue to drill down size um, view status basement area search by map you can do all of that here once you've put in all your parameters you're going to click next and now it's going to say okay here are all the properties that match your criteria. You can click to view them by clicking on the view button next to them. It will open up that property in a separate tab. And you also can say, okay, I don't wanna send individual properties. So on the main page, you can uncheck boxes and only send the properties you want to send. You also can send all of your match properties. So if you say, hey, I want to send everything on this list. Go ahead, send it all. You can do that. You also can say, hey, I don't want to send her a, a property watch at this time. I just want to save that. 
when Debbie logs into her portal, that search will be there, but you're not having to, to send all those properties. Now, the other thing that's really nice is underneath that searches for your client, your client can search, create their own search. So if your client wants to go in, they can go in and create their own. They also can go into this search tab in their portal and they can edit the search you created. So if Debbie logs in and she sees this, she says, actually, you know, I'm, we're going to have to go to 400. She can go into that portal, open it up and say, Hey, we need to change that price. We're going to go up to 400. Any questions there underneath that property watch section? All righty. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So uh, the next section that you may see is if your company is using transactions, I know some of you are using transactions, some of you are not. If you are using it, you'll see that transactions tab. Um, if your company, um, if you're putting in um, a transaction, you're, if you are using transactions, you wanna see your office admin about this, they'll walk you through how that works. And the next tab is called listings. So underneath listings, you can go in and you can attach your contact to their listing. So you can say, hey, I'm gonna add a listing. It will pull up all of your listings here. You would go ahead, or if there were too many, you could type in the address and then you would check that box. Um, Faye asked the questions, what do you do about a lease listing? Faye, that is something that is um, set at the company level. So it depends on if your company is pulling lease properties, if that is available to you or not. What company are you with, Faye? Which one? Okay, yeah, so that's a question. Okay, that's a question for your office manager. So if it, you're entering lease properties yourself and they're in your IQ office, and you have it set in the back office. So your office administrators can make that for lease available underneath property watch. But it just it has it does have to be set up. So Faye, talk to your office administrator and have them reach out to the help desk. And we can get that set up if if they want to set that up. And Annette, I think that you guys are set up. You're welcome, but I'm not 100% sure on that, Annette. So you can attach your seller to the listing here. What that does is it says, hey, this is the listing that belongs to this client. It also then gives you the ability underneath your listings to say, hey, this seller is attached here, and then you can go into the listing and set up reports and things like that. Does that make sense to everyone? Cool. Underneath that history, you're really just gonna see a detailed tracker of everything that's been done with that contact. Um, what I really like is that you can easily go through and click and you can go previous and next with your contacts. But really what happens, and for all of you, is what I recommend is going through and setting up your follow-ups. So if you're going to do action plans, awesome. If you're not going to do action plans and you want to assign individual actions, that's great. What I recommend doing is uh, going in and adding 25 follow-ups a day. So I can say, okay, Debbie, from this, main screen i'm going to add a follow-up for her this is my monthly follow-up with client i'm going to assign it to next november 21st and click save i'm going to click next and i'm going to do the same thing and spend some time 
manually adding those. Please do not, after this webinar, go in and add all 500 of your contacts and then add all 500 of them to the same action plan on the same day. The reason for that is this. If you add everyone to the same action plan on the same day, what will happen is all of your contacts will have the same follow-up date. So if you put 500 people on the same action plan on the same day, you will have the same 500 people do on the same day for your main to-do list. And if you want to real realistically work this, it's impossible to contact 500 people a day to my knowledge. Now, if you're adding 25 a day, it is very possible to follow up with 25 people a day. And if you're adding those individually, instead of using an action plan, you can go in, you would mark this as done, you would make your note, um, Debbie's dog is great, should be back to normal in a week. And once you click save, it's going to ask you when you want to schedule the additional follow-up. So say, hey, I want to follow up with Debbie in a month. And this is just a check-in call to see if she knows anyone looking for real estate. And then I would click schedule. And now that is automatically happening. So I've completed a task, I've assigned my follow-up task, I move on from Debbie and I go to my next contact. So really by going in here and saying, hey, I'm working this plan, I'm adding those follow-ups to 25 people, you can really then start to just work your dashboard. And that's the goal of all of this. The last thing I do wanna touch on is uh, this company, co custom or this my custom fields. So when we looked at Debbie and we saw that there was a social links proportion down here at the bottom that you may ha not have on your screen. What I did is I went into my custom fields and I added a group of information. So if you want to add a group that is family member names and click save, you can do that. And then you could add a field that was a uh, child one, child two. And now when I go back to my contacts and leads and open up Debbie, you're going to see that I have a section that says family member names. So you can add additional information to this details page by going to your customer relations and to my custom fields. For the office admins that I have on the phone, if you wanna do this at a company level, hey, I need some things to be available to everyone in our company, you would do that underneath company custom fields in the same place. Now, something I do wanna just quickly touch on as well is the difference in a lead and a contact. So a contact is someone that you are putting into the system and you are uh, managing. They're your person, you met them, you put them into the system. A lead is someone that your, came in through your website or the company website. So I can see here that this is a lead. It's a website house value. And the only difference in a lead and a contact is your ability to delete them and the mandatory status. So every lead will have a status assigned to them and your contacts, you can assign a status if you want, but you do not have to. If you need to change the status, so right now this status is set to new. And if you need to change the status to uh, an incubating contact, I can say uh, this is a long-term lead and I can click save and that changes the status. 
So again, the difference in a lead and a contact, a lead comes in from your website or from your company website, and you can mark them as dead, but you cannot delete them. Um, if you mark them as dead, they get rerouted to the company and they come out of your lead router section. You also can accept leads in here. Um, you'll get a notice to your phone via email, text, and or phone call, depending on how your preferences are set up. But you can also accept leads within your IQ office. You would go to the Actions tab and click Accept. Once you accept that lead, then you get access to the full information. Any questions for me? That is a ton of information in a very short amount of time. Again, we talked about going in using that import contacts to import a CSV file and then going into your contacts, adding 25 people a day to an action plan or scheduling a follow-up action. We also talked about the ability to add your own custom fields to contacts and how to complete actions on your main dashboard so that you are working a to-do list and your to-do list isn't working you. I do want to just quick mention a couple other things that you have access to. So if you would like to add a contact to a drip marketing campaign, you can do that from within the um, contact screen itself. Hang tight while this loads. So you can go underneath campaigns here and you can click, don't be click happy like I am. Patience is a practice. So you can click that plus button next to the campaign once we get back to that screen. Maybe I'll do it just from here. So underneath campaigns, I can click plus. I can easily add them to a campaign and click save. <coughs> I also can categorize my contacts. So if you want to subdivide your contacts into buyers, sellers, dog people, cat people, farm and ranch, luxury, um, investors, you can do that. You're going to click this pencil next to contact types. And you can go ahead and you can add it. Seller, add contact type. Buyer, add contact type. Farm and ranch, add contact type. And then all you'll have to do is check those boxes next to those contact types and click save. If someone changes from a seller to a buyer, you can easily just uncheck and recheck check that box. This contact types helps you when you're setting up your marketing campaigns so that you know who to direct and who to add to different campaigns. Any questions at all? This is a quiet group today. So the first link that I'm going to share with you in that chat box is a link to all of our training that we have going on. You can see all of our upcoming trainings on that page, and we're more than happy to have you attend. All sessions are recorded, and they go out to all the people that register. So if you can't make a session but you're interested in the information, definitely that is the place to go and register. You'll get a copy of it. We also have a Facebook page if you're not a member of it. We would love to have you be a part. Um, you can re reach us on Facebook with the link that's in that chat box now. This is a great place to answer questions, ask questions. We do our best to answer them via video and via um, knowledge-based articles so that you're getting the information that you need. And then, of course, our last uh, resource for you today is our YouTube channel. So we do have a YouTube channel. 
We are updating it. We put all of our webinars on this YouTube channel and we are updating it with information as our system updates. Um, you can definitely subscribe there. The nice thing about our YouTube channel is there's this little search bar. So you could actually just search in there, contact, and it will bring up all of the videos that have to do with contacts. So you can easily search and, and go through our videos here as well. Um, if there are no other questions, I want to make sure you all have a great day and you have time to get on with your day. Uh, I will see you next Monday at 8 a.m. We will be talking about um, the overview of tools that you have, how to use your calendar, eSign, how do you make your own action plans, where is all that information housed. I hope you all have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.